Uh, I'm blessing. Uh, I'm based at the Investor of Reading, um, and um, I'm going to be talking to you about foxes today. Um, so, uh, analysis of foxes uh, is part of a bigger project uh, that we are working on, which is called From Feed the Bears to Do Not Feed the Animals. Uh, so it is a Wellcome Trust funded project. Uh, we started in 2021 uh, and we'll finish next year. Uh, so it is led by Professor uh, Naomi Sachs from the University of Exeter. And it involves the University of Reading, uh, University of Roehampton, uh, University of Exeter and National Museums, Scotland. So we have a website um, and we've got so many animals that we are focusing on. Um, so if people are interested in seeing other animals like cats, cattle, or all sorts of birds and everything, uh, you can go to our website and you can see a lot there. So our project is on animal feeding. Uh, so whether we can, whether we should or we shouldn't be feeding animals. Uh, so we focus on investigating when feeding animals started, uh, what drives us to feed animals and uh, the consequences of uh, feeding the animals. So in this, um, so as part of this do not feed the animals project, we've got the small fox project. And uh, this uh, involves uh, myself, uh, Dr. Stuart Black from University of Reading, uh, Dr. Andrew Kishner, from National Museum Scotland, uh, Dr. David Cooper from National Museum Scotland again. And then we've got Professor Steve Harris, um, he's retired now, but he was based in, at um, in Fest of Bristol. So uh, we have foxes from um, 1970s that are housed at the National Museum Scotland. So we are looking at foxes from Kent, uh, Wales and London. Uh, all spanning between 1970 and 1972. And then uh, we also have got um, modern foxes that we have been collecting from last year. Uh, so uh, there is another project called the Fox Project in, in London. Uh, so they've been giving us foxes and then we are getting some foxes from the feds or that died um, last year. And then uh, with archaeological foxes, that's what we are working on right now. Uh, so, so far, we only have got a few medieval archaeological foxes from uh, Woodshare. Um, then, um, so I am actually, I've come here to look for archaeological samples uh, for foxes. So from the UK. So if anyone has got them, uh, please uh, just... Give me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so um, our research questions, we are trying to find if we can find an association between humans and foxes in the past. So that's where the archaeological foxes come in. And then we are trying to find uh, if there are any differences, dietary differences between archaeological foxes and the 1970 foxes and the modern foxes. And then we are also looking at elemental analysis using uh, portable XRF uh, to investigate diet and pollutants in foxes. And Stuart Black has done most of these uh, elemental analysis on not just foxes, on so many an other animals. Uh, we are also looking to see if we can differentiate the urban foxes from their rural counterparts uh, through diet and morphological analysis. Um, so for today, I'm only going to talk to you about isotope analysis. So for isotope analysis, we've done bone collagen, uh, bone carbonate, enamel, carbon, uh, enamel uh, analysis, uh, dentin as well, but I'm only going to uh, present to you the bone collagen results. So in general, what do foxes eat? So red, red foxes like in the UK, like others elsewhere, 
they are common in and around villages nowadays and um, they are in cities and in general we know that they are expert hunters and they catch rabbits, rodents, uh, birds, frogs, earthworms, all sorts of things. They eat berries and um, fruits too. So in urban areas, we know that vegetation in urban areas mostly consists of lawns and gardens, which provide a consistent high quality food source for small herbivorous animals such as rabbits. Uh, we know that urban foxes consume a large proportion of anthropogenic food as well. So that includes like food scraps, uh, human waste, um, and pet food sometimes. Uh, this consists of uh, a mixture of different food items that are isotopically contrasting to natural food sources. Uh, therefore, we predict a small isotopic range for the urban foxes, uh, since cities have got a relatively large constant supply of human food. And then human food consists of food items of low traffic level, so we usually expect um, the urban foxes to be like down there. Uh, because um, we know that um, the like anthropogenic food has got low nitrogen values than the natural press prey uh, that we find. And then uh, we know that key prey species such as rabbits, uh, they, are, they may not be common in farmed areas. Uh, therefore, there are very few, and this may impel foxes in rural areas to consume prey items at higher trophic levels, uh, such as... Um, such as uh, small mammals, small omnivorous mammals, uh, bears, uh, uh, even sometimes occasionally eggs, uh, they, do, they do eat them. So we expect the rural foxes to be like, uh, to have higher nitrogen values. So as I said earlier, uh, we don't have many archeological foxes and uh, we have compiled just a few, because even in literature, I can't really seem to find archaeological foxes. But then the Anglo-Saxon foxes and Iron Age foxes that I have, I've taken them from published papers. And we're trying to see from these to see if there's any relationship between, um, between humans and, uh, and the foxes. So for the Anglo-Saxon period, comparison with the human data showed that it was unlikely that during this time, foxes were being consumed. But then when you look at the Iron Age, we sort of think that it looks like um, you, humans were feeding on, on these foxes. But this is only a few foxes, so we can't really conclude anything. And that's why we are really looking for archaeological foxes to work with. Then we've got the medieval foxes. Uh, they, 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 they are just giving us a wider range, uh, but then we do not have um, humans from the same size. Uh, we, we got them from Murche, and we do not have uh, like humans to compare them from the same period and uh, the same size. But uh, these are dated to 13th to the 14th century. We did a radiocarbon dating of a um, rabbit that was found at this site, and it dated to that period. Then we've got the 1970s foxes. Um, so we can see that the, in terms of carbon, uh, we've got the Kent ones in light blue and the London ones in light red. I don't know if there's such a color. Yeah, so red. Um, then we've got uh, the wash foxes. So we can see that the wash foxes are a bit different from the Kent and, um, and the London foxes, but the difference is not much. Um, and they are all C3. Uh, they are all eating C3 uh, terrestrial resources. And then if we look at carbon and at nitrogen, we can see that we've got um, these four uh, Kent foxes that have got very low uh, nitrogen values. And we think that most likely they are urban, uh, but we are, we are not yet sure. We are still doing so many investigations uh, on this, but then low nitrogen values makes us think that they are, they are urban. And then we've got this one 
folks that I I think it might be from the coastal uh, areas in summer. I, I couldn't because we don't have uh, we don't have C4 in UK. So the only reason why it is with this high nitrogen values and uh, it's um, enriched carbon, uh, we thought that it might be a fishy fox. But uh, we are doing, uh, as part of our isotopes, we are also doing sulfur analysis. So I don't have the results yet. I thought they'll be out by now, but then by the time that I come here, but then I don't know, but we'll double check with the sulfur analysis to see if it is really a fishy fox. Then we have got this other, it's still from Kent, so you can see the range, uh, the wide range from Kent. I'm not sure why we have this wide range in nitrogen values from Kent, really. But then we've got that, um, that one, which has got high nitrogen. It's really, we know definitely it's, it's um, we know definitely that it's, um, it's rural because uh, we, from elemental analysis, we couldn't find uh, the common uh, the common metals that we like lead uh, that we usually find in urban areas. Whereas for these four, we did found uh, we found uh, those ele those uh, uh, elements. And then we've got the modern foxes uh, that we've been collecting from last year. They are all uh, like. They look like they are all um, urban foxes. And uh, we're trying to differentiate at the moment is to see if whether they are rural or urban. And when compared with the London, so these are all from London, and we compared the 1970s from London, we can see the difference that the modern ones have got very low nitrogen values, indicating that they are more rural. And we would expect that because we know that um, if we think about it, people nowadays are no longer eating as much meat as probably people in the 1970s. So even the 1970s foxes were eating anthropogenic foods, we think that it will be different isotopically uh, from the, what the modern ones are eating now. Uh, so this is just a summary of all the carbon from the... Uh, from the foxes that we have, and we can see from the archaeological period uh, to from the Iron Age to the modern ones, and yeah, the the carbon is, I mean, it's not too different, uh, but then we still need we really uh, the carbon from the uh, from Kent uh, from the wash foxes is different, and we also we've also seen that in the oxygen. Uh, isotopes that we are getting that we've got different, even if they are all from the 1970s, the oxygen isotopes are also different. And then if we look at the nitrogen values, and which is what you were seeing earlier, the nitrogen for the modern ones is completely different from the rest of the uh, of the foxes. So yeah, so yeah, we are still we are still investigating, and at the moment we want to sample more archaeological foxes because we really want to see um, those differences, how, how diet has changed from, from the archaeological period to present. We, we sort of are now done sampling the modern and the 70s foxes, but the archaeological foxes, we really need them. And then we've got isotope, we've got stomach contents for the modern foxes. So we are also analyze, we are also doing isotope analysis of those uh, stomach contents. And we are also doing the ana isotope analysis of the potential prey, but this will only work for the, uh, the potential prey will have proper values for the modern values, for the modern foxes. Uh, I'm not yet sure what to do with the 1970s foxes. And if anyone can advise me on how to solve that, that would be great. And for the archaeological foxes, usually we get the prey species uh, within the sites when we get the samples. And then we are going to do fruits modeling at the end when we have got uh, all the results. Um, so yeah, that's it. So if anyone has got uh, any questions. Yeah.